In the intricate dance of survival and warfare, knives have been indispensable tools, symbols of power, and deadly companions. From the vast, cold plains of Scandinavia to the sun-bathed valleys of Nepal, each culture developed their unique blades, honed to perfection by the ruthless hand of necessity. Number 1. The Kukuri of the Gurkha Warriors Draped in the shroud of myth, tradition, and an unyielding spirit, the Kukuri of the Gurkha warriors has earned its reputation as one of history's deadliest knives. Originating from the mountainous terrain of Nepal, the Kukuri is more than just a weapon. It's an iconic symbol of the Gurkha warrior class, one that has been thrust into global recognition through countless tales of courage and resilience. The Kukuri, at first glance, might seem unassuming. Its distinct, inwardly curved blade, typically around 16 to 18 inches in length, might not inspire fear the way a longsword or a broad axe might. However, it is this very design that makes it such an efficient and deadly weapon. The curve delivers a focused impact area that can generate enough force to chop wood or even cut through bone. It's said that once a kukuri is unsheathed, it must taste blood, if not that of an enemy, then that of its wielder. The ferocity of the Gurkhas and their Kukuris has echoed through many battles. During the Falklands War in 1982, it is reported that a lone Gurkha took out an entire Argentinian trench using only his Kukuri. Tales such as these are not uncommon, feeding into the mystique of the Kukuri. The deadly Kukuri, however, goes beyond being just an efficient weapon. It's an embodiment of the Gurkha spirit, courageous, resilient, and indomitable. These attributes, combined with the skilled hands that wield this blade, make the Kukuri one of the deadliest knives in the world. It's not just the steel, the curve, or the sharpness, but the heart of the Gurkha behind it that elevates the Kukuri to a status far beyond a mere weapon. Number 2. The Bowie Knife, a symbol of the American frontier. America's vast, unexplored frontier in the 19th century was a wild place. It was an era of cowboys and outlaws, of exploration and peril, of survival and toughness. Among the tools and weapons of this age, none stands out more than the Bowie knife, named after the legendary Jim Bowie, a fighter of remarkable skill and tenacity. The Bowie knife, with its heavy blade of about 9 to 15 inches and distinctively clipped point, is a symbol of the rugged frontier spirit. While its exact origins remain a subject of debate, the popular narrative credits Jim Bowie and the blacksmith James Black with the knife's creation. Bowie made the knife famous during the sandbar fight in 1827, where he emerged victorious despite being severely wounded, largely thanks to the hefty blade. Jim Bowie's reputation as a formidable knife fighter, coupled with the American fascination for the frontier and rugged individualism, helped the Bowie knife achieve iconic status. After the sandbar fight, the knife's fame spread far and wide. It became the weapon of choice for many frontiersmen who found its versatility and effectiveness indispensable in the harsh wilderness. The Bowie knife's fame reached its peak during the time of the gold rush in the mid 19th century, where it was virtually a staple for miners heading west. Its effectiveness in survival situations and personal defense made it an essential part of their gear. Furthermore, its reputation was bolstered by popular culture of the time, with many plays, stories, and later films featuring the knife. Yet the Bowie knife was more than a handy tool or an effective weapon. It was a symbol of the rugged and tenacious spirit of the frontiersmen who ventured into the unknown, braving the uncharted wilderness. The knife embodied the ethos of self-reliance, toughness, and resilience that defined the American frontier. It was not just the weapon's physical attributes, but the ideology it represented that made the Bowie knife one of the deadliest and most revered knives in history. Even today, the Bowie knife remains an iconic piece of Americana. It embodies a time of exploration and survival, a symbol of American grit, and a testament to the blade's deadly effectiveness and versatility. This historical weapon, like the Kukuri of the Gurkha warriors, is not just a piece of sharpened steel, but a cultural icon laden with history and symbolism. 
Number 3. The Ulfbert Sword, a Viking legacy. While not a knife in the traditional sense, the Ulfbert Sword is worth including in our list due to its historical significance and the deadly efficiency of its design. The Vikings, known for their seafaring prowess, exploration, and ferocity in battle, were the proud wielders of this extraordinary weapon. The Ulfbert Sword, with its remarkable craftsmanship and superior quality, stood as a testament to the Vikings' martial excellence. Ulfbert swords were a class apart from most other swords of the time. Typically, a Viking sword would measure about 90 centimeters in length, with a broad, double-edged blade and a shallow fuller running down the middle. The Ulfbert, while sharing this basic structure, was distinguished by its material quality. These swords were made from high-carbon steel, akin to modern-day steel, a material so pure that historians initially thought they were made centuries later than they actually were. This high-carbon steel, also known as crucible steel, gave Ulfbert swords superior flexibility and sharpness while making them less brittle than their counterparts. The blades bore the inscription, Plus Valfbert Plus, a Frankish personal name that became synonymous with premium swords. This sign of quality, akin to a modern-day brand, led to a proliferation of counterfeits. However, these imitations were easily identifiable by metallurgical analysis and their misspelled inscriptions. Possession of an Ulfbert sword signaled prestige and wealth. These swords were far beyond the reach of an average Viking warrior, suggesting their owners were individuals of high status, chieftains or wealthy warriors. Given their superior performance in battle and the status they conferred, these swords were highly sought after. They were so revered that they were often buried with their owners, a clear indication of their significance. The legacy of the Ulfbert swords endures, not only as an icon of the Viking Age, but also as a testament to the technological and metallurgical prowess of the period. They remind us of a time when the quality of a blade could determine life or death, and when owning such a weapon could elevate one's status significantly. In the hands of the fearsome Viking warriors, the Ulfbert was more than a sword. It was a symbol of power, a work of art, and most certainly a deadly force to reckon with. Number 4. The Fairbairn Sykes Fighting Knife, a Commando's Best Friend War, as they say, is a catalyst for innovation. One such creation born out of the crucible of conflict is the Fairbairn Sykes Fighting Knife, a weapon that became the quintessential companion for British commandos during World War II. Designed by William Ewart Fairbairn and Eric Anthony Sykes, two veterans of the Shanghai Municipal Police, this knife's legacy has resonated through decades of military history. The Fairbairn Sykes Fighting Knife, often referred to simply as the FS Knife, was designed with a singular purpose, close quarters combat. The knife is characterized by its slender, sharply pointed blade, a foil grip, and a small crossguard. The dagger-like design makes it particularly adept at thrusting and stabbing, making it deadly in the hands of a trained commando. It's lightweight and easy to conceal, making it ideal for covert operations. Fairbairn and Sykes, having served in some of the roughest parts of Shanghai, were well-versed in close combat scenarios. Their experiences, both in gritty street fights and in training police officers, gave them invaluable insights into designing a knife for combat. They recognized the need for a fighting knife that was simple, efficient, and above all, reliable in the chaos of a melee. The FS knife was put into service in 1941 and quickly became a symbol of Britain's special forces, particularly the commandos and the special air service. Its needle-like blade was designed to slide easily through the ribs of an enemy, and its hilt was carefully balanced to facilitate quick, precise strikes. Soldiers were taught not just to use the knife, but to think of it as an extension of their arm, incorporating it into their natural movements. The knife's effectiveness in silent killing and sabotage missions was attested to by countless commandos. It was not just a tool of warfare, but a morale booster. To carry the FS knife was a mark of distinction, a symbol that the soldier was part of an elite group. It's important to note that the FS knife, like any weapon, was as deadly as the person wielding it. Fairbairn and Sykes didn't just design the knife, they designed a whole system of knife fighting to go with it. The training manual they developed, Get Tough, taught soldiers to be swift, ruthless, and precise, reinforcing the lethality of the FS knife. 
the FS fighting knife is still in use in various forms today, a testament to its enduring effectiveness. It has been issued to military units across the globe, immortalized in countless war stories, and even featured in films and television series. It is not just a blade, but a piece of history, a symbol of the bravery and resolve of the men who carried it into battle. The Fairbairn Sykes fighting knife stands as one of the deadliest knives ever created, owing not just to its design, but to the men who wielded it with unwavering courage and skill. Number 5. The Chris Dagger, the Serpent Blade of Southeast Asia Among the pantheon of legendary blades, the Chris Dagger of Southeast Asia carves out its own unique space. With its serpentine blade and artistic craftsmanship, the Chris is as much a work of art as it is a weapon. Throughout history, it has played a significant role in the cultural and spiritual life of the region, particularly in Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines, standing as a symbol of power, social status, and spiritual belief. The Chris, sometimes spelled as Keris, is easily recognized by its distinctive wavy blade reminiscent of a slithering snake. This design, while aesthetically pleasing, also lends the blade a unique combat advantage. The serpentine shape can cause more grievous wounds due to its wider cutting surface, making the Chris a particularly deadly weapon in close combat. The creation of a Chris is considered an art form, imbued with spiritual significance. The bladesmith, or Empu, is more than a mere craftsman. He is a spiritual figure believed to infuse the blade with a form of essence, or presence. The blade is made using a variety of metals, often folded hundreds of times in the fashion of Damascus steel, resulting in patterns of lines and streaks known as pamor. The pamor is not just visually striking, but also serves as a mark of the Chris's spiritual and mystical attributes. The hilt and scabbard of the Chris are also decorated ornately, often using precious metals, ivory, or wood. The designs are usually intricate, featuring mythological creatures and divine symbols from the rich tapestry of Southeast Asian culture. Each Chris is unique, not just a weapon, but a representation of cultural identity, spiritual belief, and artistic expression. In 2005, UNESCO declared the Chris a masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity, recognizing its cultural and historical significance. The Chris Dagger, with its serpentine blade and spiritual essence, stands as one of the deadliest and most unique knives in the world. Its status as a weapon, a work of art, and a spiritual object makes it a fascinating relic of Southeast Asian culture. It is a testament to the blending of craftsmanship, spirituality, and martial skill, creating a blade that is as deadly as it is beautiful. Number 6. The Roman Gladius, Sword That Built an Empire the Roman Gladius, often referred to as the sword that built an empire, is one of history's most renowned weapons. Utilized by the Roman legions that expanded and defended the Roman Empire, the Gladius proved instrumental in their military successes, reinforcing Rome's dominance for nearly a millennium. The Gladius is characterized by its short, broad, double-edged blade, typically measuring 18 to 24 inches long. Its design is a product of practicality and efficiency, tailored for the type of close combat that characterized Roman military tactics. In the heat of battle, the short length provided soldiers with improved control and maneuverability, facilitating rapid, devastating thrusts into the enemy's vital areas. Though there were several variations over time, including the early Mainz type and later Pompeii type, the essence of the Gladius design remained consistent. It was paired with a large, rectangular shield, scutum, and soldiers were trained to use them in tandem. In the Roman phalanx, the shield protected the soldier from incoming attacks, while the gladius was used for stabbing at the enemy from behind the safety of the shield wall. The effectiveness of the gladius lay not just in its design, but also in the training of the soldiers who wielded it. Roman soldiers, or legionaries, underwent rigorous training to master the gladius. They were taught to thrust rather than slash, aiming to puncture the enemy's vital organs, a strategy that was often lethal given the lack of advanced medical care. The gladius was not just a weapon, it was an emblem of Roman martial might and discipline. The possession of a gladius marked a man as a Roman soldier, binding him to his comrades and to Rome itself. It was a symbol of duty, honor, and strength, values that were central to Roman society. The influence of the gladius extended beyond the battlefield. 
It made its way into the Roman psyche and language. The word gladiator stems from gladius, referring to the warriors who fought in bloody spectacles in the Colosseum and other arenas, often using weapons similar to the gladius. In the grand narrative of history, the Roman gladius stands out as one of the most iconic weapons. The sword that built an empire, it was at the heart of the Roman military machine that dominated the ancient world. In the hands of a well-trained Roman legionary, it was a weapon of remarkable deadly efficiency, a testament to Roman ingenuity and martial discipline. The gladius's legacy, much like the empire it served, has endured the test of time, etching its place in the annals of military history. Number 7. The Katana, the Soul of the Samurai the katana, with its distinctive curved, slender, single-edged blade, is one of the most recognizable and revered weapons in history. Associated with the samurai of feudal Japan, the katana is more than just a sword. It is a symbol of honor, precision, and artistry, and it is often described as the soul of the samurai. The design of the katana is a masterpiece of martial engineering. Its blade, typically around 60 to 80 centimeters long, is curved, facilitating swift, clean cuts. The blade's edge is incredibly sharp, crafted through a meticulous forging process that involves repeatedly heating, folding, and hammering the steel. The blade's backside, in contrast, is made from softer steel, granting the katana a unique blend of sharpness and flexibility. One of the key attributes of the katana is its differential hardening, or hamen. This process creates a harder edge for cutting and a softer spine for shock absorption, giving the blade its characteristic curved shape. The hamen is visible as a distinct pattern along the blade's edge and is considered one of the katana's aesthetic features. The katana is not just about the blade. Its handle, or tsuka, is equally important. Wrapped in ray skin and silk or cotton cord, it provides a firm, comfortable grip. The wrapping is done in a specific pattern, designed to keep the sword secure in the hand, even when it's slick with sweat or blood. Samurai would wield the katana with a two-handed grip, allowing for more controlled, powerful cuts. The creation of a katana is a sacred art, traditionally the work of a highly skilled bladesmith. The process is painstaking, requiring patience, precision, and a deep understanding of metallurgy and craftsmanship. A single katana can take months or even years to complete, and the result is a weapon of unmatched quality and beauty. In combat, the katana is devastatingly effective. Its sharpness allows for precise, lethal cuts, and its curved shape makes it ideal for horseback fighting. Its effectiveness is not solely due to its design but also the skill and discipline of the samurai who wield it. Samurai underwent rigorous training to master their swordsmanship, practicing techniques that have been passed down for generations. The katana, however, was more than a weapon to the samurai. It was a symbol of their status and their warrior spirit. It was treated with the utmost respect and care, viewed as an extension of the samurai's soul. Today, the katana is admired worldwide for its design, craftsmanship, and symbolism. It is a symbol of Japan's historical and cultural heritage and a testament to the samurai's code of honor and martial prowess. In the hands of a samurai, the katana was more than a sword. It was an instrument of justice, a protector of peace, and a deadly piece of art. Number 8. The Machete, Tool and Weapon Known for its versatility and robustness, the machete is a blade that transcends the boundary between tool and weapon. Widely used across the globe, particularly in tropical regions, this large knife has carved its niche in both agricultural practices and historical conflicts, marking it as one of the deadliest knives in existence. Machetes generally have broad blades, usually 12 to 24 inches long and about 0.12 inches thick. The blade is typically straight or slightly curved, depending on the specific variant or regional design. The size and design make it ideal for various tasks, such as chopping wood, cutting vegetation, or hunting. The long, hefty blade allows for powerful swings, making it an efficient tool in regions where dense vegetation is a fact of daily life. Machetes are produced in various styles, each with their specific applications and regional ties. For instance, the Latin or bush machete is the standard style most commonly recognized, with a straight-back blade. In contrast, the bolo machete, 
popular in Southeast Asia, has a bulbous tip that adds weight to the knife's end for more powerful chopping. The cultural significance of the machete also can't be overlooked. In many communities, it's seen as a symbol of hard work and survival. In some cultures, it's imbued with spiritual or symbolic meaning. For instance, in the Afro-Caribbean tradition of Santeria, the machete represents the Orisha Ogun, the deity of iron and warfare. While it might not have the elegance of a katana or the prestige of a gladius, the machete is a formidable knife in its own right. Its simple design, practical utility, and historical impact as a weapon of war and revolution underscore its deadly potential. From the rainforests of the Amazon to the sugar plantations of the Caribbean, the machete is a reminder that sometimes the most effective weapons are also the most basic ones. In the hands of those who wield it, the machete has proven to be both a vital tool and a deadly weapon. Number 9. The Swiss Dagger, a Knight's Retainer. The Swiss Dagger, with its characteristic double-edged blade and curved guard, is a weapon deeply rooted in medieval European history. It was a secondary weapon for Swiss mercenaries, renowned warriors whose services were employed across Europe during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. The dagger was typically 20 inches long, with a diamond-shaped blade that could puncture chainmail and penetrate gaps in plate armor. Its unique guard, shaped like a crescent moon, was designed for hand protection and to catch an opponent's blade in combat. The pommel and the guard were often intricately decorated, reflecting the craftsmanship and aesthetic tastes of the time. Carried by knights and mercenaries as a sidearm, the Swiss dagger was used in close combat when primary weapons were ineffective or impractical. Its sharp, sturdy blade was perfect for thrusting attacks, and it was a valuable weapon when the fight got too close for swords or polearms. The Swiss dagger, while not as famous as some other historical blades, was a deadly tool in the arsenal of a medieval warrior. Number 10. The Scottish Dirk, Icon of the Highland Warrior The Scottish Dirk, a long, single-edged knife, is a symbol of Scotland's Gaelic heritage and the courage of its Highland warriors. Evolved from the medieval Balak dagger, the Dirk became an integral part of traditional Highland attire. Typically 12 to 20 inches long, the dirk was used for both everyday tasks and as a weapon in battle. It was handy in close combat, used for stabbing and thrusting movements. Its size and weight made it manageable but deadly, capable of inflicting deep wounds. The dirk often featured ornate designs with Celtic patterns carved into the wooden handle and the blade displaying a traditional Highland filework known as jimping. It was carried in a leather sheath, often adorned with fur and silver fittings, reflecting the wealth and status of the owner. The Scottish dirk is a lasting symbol of Highland culture, resonating through history as a tool of survival and a weapon of war. Its lethal effectiveness and cultural significance place it among the world's deadliest knives. It stands testament to the Highlander's spirit, remembered in tales of valor and resistance.